Welcome into the studio. I just finished off a koala study pastel drawing. That's uh, February 2022 for my Patreon art channel. And for this YouTube clip, I wanted to show you how I blocked in the head for the, we're using just pan pastels. Okay, because I know a lot of people want to get into pan pastels to see how they work. So I thought this may be an interesting video for you all. Hope you all enjoy it. Okay, so I'm using Pastelmark Dark Grey Paper by Clay Fontaine. Looks a bit brown on the screen. That's just the um, colour coming out a little bit strange. That's my reference photo on the left. That's just obviously a part of it. For most of this, I'll be using a reference photo um, of a lovely image that I got from wildlifereferencephotos.com. Okay, so I'll put a link to that. And... Um, I've transferred my drawing over and you can see it's really a very um, simple rudimentary uh, just line drawing and you can do it with transfer paper or just draw it you know freehand it's not very difficult as they go so that gives me you know where the main elements are going to live and I've just come in with a white pastel pencil anyone will do I've used it on the side I'm using extremely light pressure just to indicate where the whitest elements are so around the eye on the chin and around the side of that nose now i've picked up the black um, pastel pencil as i said any brand will do i wouldn't use one of the real softest brands for this stage like a caran d'ache or a geoconda i'd use one of the harder ones like carbothello or pit they give you more control and don't deposit a lot of pastel down on the surface. And once again, all I'm really doing is just indicating loosely, lightly, where the main darks are going to be. So over here, under the highlight bits of fur, you know, the little tiny dots we see of the highlights. And down on the snout by here, it's, it's dark. I'm not worrying about following fur direction or anything because... I'll rub all this in so that doesn't really matter and as you can see it's a tiny amount of pastel going down we're going to have lots more pastel the only reason i do this is because it kind of shows me exactly where the areas areas are going to be like around the eye here we've got a dark area if you don't put things like it, this in fairly early on if you're using pan pastels or soft pastels or even pastel pencils very loosely it can be quite easy to rub over an area perhaps of the eye and before you know it you've lost the position of the eye and then you're trying to guess how big it was and you know it's this is giving me that map that i can follow i can squint my eyes as i'm doing this look at the reference photo and think okay where's the major bits of dark going okay we've got a good bit going under the eye here and then a bit more down on the cheek I know I need to go a lot darker here eventually up on the forehead. We've got the white around the eye on the chin. So that just gives me the absolute basic to start. But it does, as you can see, clearly shows me where the major lights and darks are going to go. For the rim lighting, the edge light on the nose, I need to have a dark background. I know I'm going to do it a grey, but at the moment I'm just thinking in tonal values tonal values are black and white light and dark nothing more than that so let's get that simple line drawing and blocking in done first now with that done i can think about adding some color and for this part of the demonstration i'm going to use pan pastels so i'll assume as this is as i said more like a, a workshop as if i was sitting with you guys in real life I'll assume you don't know much about pan pastels. Well, briefly, they're a compressed pastel in a flat circular pan. And I'm just using some scrap pastel matte paper to match up and check I've got the color just about right. So I'm just dipping this soft tool into the pan pastel. I've got a small piece of um, printer paper, just standard cheap printer paper that I'm mixing the pan pastel on to get it just right. Now, I can't show you the mixing 
and the reference photo and the drawing in enough detail and large enough to make sense all at the same time. So check out my video on exactly how I mix my pan pastels. I've got a couple of them. They're free videos and they show you exactly how I do it in detail. It's very simple anyway, but for those completely new, you want to see um, that video. Now I'm just putting a darkish gray, a bluey gray around the koala to start with. Now I'm doing that because remember we've got that light area on the nose that's standing out from the background and then the rest of the fur on the top of the head of the koala stands out from the background as well. So by getting this background color correct, the tonal value, the darkness correct, that's going to play a massive part in me getting the tonal value of the koala correct. If I didn't put the background in, I could quite easily get the koala tonal value wrong. So I could do it too light or too dark. And I'm just rubbing that pastel into the pastel matte surface. It's just kind of fixing it in place. And I'm going to go a bit darker in places as well. Okay, so pan pastel, you don't have to use this. You could just use your pastel pencils, especially on the side if you're doing backgrounds. Or you could use soft pastels like pastel sticks in place of pan pastels. I just like to show you all different types of methods and styles so you guys can use whatever supplies you actually have at the time. So now I've got that background in place, I can come back in and try to get the tonal value a bit more accurate on the koala. Colors really don't need to be exact at all. The reason being if we had a slightly different light on the koala, say it was a morning light or an afternoon light, the colors would be different slightly or even dramatically different. The tonal value is the thing that's given us the three dimensional shape of the koala on a flat surface, the paper. Okay, so at this stage, I generally squint my eyes to get rid of the major details of the koala in the reference, or you can print it out blurry instead so we don't get bogged down and thinking about details too early. We need to get a nice solid looking base layer first. Now around here is quite dark as well. I'm not thinking about the details, those little lighter spe speckles on top. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about more of the under layer, the bits in between the highlights, because when we put the highlights on later on, they need a base to go on top of that's darker than the highlights. If it's the same tonal value, when we put the highlights on top, they won't show up. Okay, so that's why I've used that dark gray paper as well. So when I put the highlights around the eyes, as you'll see in a moment, they will show up on this darker paper. The dark show up on it and the highlights show up on it. If I'd used a white paper, the highlights wouldn't show up. If I'd use a really, really dark paper, in this case, the darks wouldn't show up. So you can see, as I've put that base layer on, I've deliberately made it, you know, kind of uneven, just as we're seeing on the koala fur. Now the pastel matte paper, that's a critical element. When you're doing this style, it holds the pastel in place. If I use this very smooth paper, then the pastel would just smudge into each other and I wouldn't get the multiple layers on top that I want. Now already it's starting to take shape. It's a bit lighter up here at the top. And you can see why I put that background in. It means that light shows up. So I'm already getting that three dimensional shape with just, just a bit less than 10 minutes worth of work. Now I'm happy with that gray. I'm going to start to lighten it down here. I'm not putting much pastel on. It's not a ton of pastel at all. You only need an, the smallest amount really that you can get away with. So a bit lighter around here. Around the eye is going a bit lighter down under here as well. It 
eventually be darker on the nose up here is pretty much the darkest part of the nose small circular strokes with the pan pastel tool helps to get it into the surface of the pastel matte paper and then we've got that edge in that little rim of light going around the edge so I'll just leave that with no pastel on for now I can come back and do all the refinement later on and then we go dark down here as well I'm trying to be careful not to lose the shape of the nose completely as I put this on if I go just straight over the nostril area I'll lose that shape and all of a sudden I'm then guessing or trying to estimate where that curve goes so it's much easier to go around that leave it in place so that I don't lose the actual drawing now down here I'm using a different um, you can either use a different clean pan pastel tool or you can wipe it off on microfiber cloth okay but when you're going from a real dark area to a light area you do need to either wipe it or even better really have a different tip to put on there so you're not contaminating because if I put a real dark gray down here by mistake then I'm going to struggle to get that brightness back so that's why remember I put those light pencil marks down that kind of stops me making a mistake and putting things in the wrong place not so um, much required in a drawing this size but when you're doing large complicated drawings then it's very easy to put something dark or light in the wrong place now around here I've just warm that area up with a richer brown for now I'll get the colors more accurate later on and I just rub it in every now and again with my finger that's just bedding that pastel in okay we don't want lots and lots of pastel floating around on the surface and you can see the way I'm using it is creating virtually no dust at all lots of artists think pastel is a very dusty medium but if you're using pastel matte paper and the techniques I use it as I said there's very little dust going on or little dust floating around I should say so I'm just going to carry on now with this base layer now something to remember with pan pastels they've got lots of different shape and size tools so you can use these ones they call knives they come in like a triangular shape a rounded shape so there's a few different shapes of those or you can use um, small sponge looking ones that are shaped like a fingertip and they come in different shapes as well so you've got large round ones triangular ones of those lots of different varieties so there's sizes to suit every size of drawing and even down to small applicators that look like little tiny makeup applicators as well so you can really you know Put a fair amount of detail down with just pan pastels if that's the type of drawing you want i use them almost always just for the under layer and they're also really great to create those soft looking backgrounds as well it's really easy to do with pan pastels now on top of this under layer what i'll be doing on the rest of my patreon video on the long version because this all goes on for a few hours the actual workshop itself is to put the dark details in so you can see on the top left of the head between the eye and the nose those dark areas that's in a process that I call texturizing where I'll be using my black pencil and really just kind of stippling with the um, marks to create all those darker areas okay so I'll texturize this after this section and then the final stage would really be layering the lights on top so you really build up with layers and the pan pastels really the first of those layers so I hope you've enjoyed this short video as I said the full length is on my patreon art channel just wanted to quickly mention my patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction it's packed full of pastel videos oil videos as well and those videos are being added to new ones every single month 
I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies and I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details you see everything I do how I create my work but it's not just for beginners it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well and this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details tips and techniques and as mentioned I've got lots of oil videos on there too so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just four dollars now over a thousand members strong Hope to see you there soon.